Hello, this is John Harrigan in the Secret to Immortality podcast. Today's episode is based on the blog article, Get the Love You Want. And this unique blog article was written in response to the podcast episode before this one with the exact same name. So there's a lot of talk here about love and why is that? Well, the reason is our core immortal self, our soul, is characterized primarily by love. When you start to feel that core of yourself, that soul, our ability as we work along in the secret to immortality, our ability to feel this loving core of who we are is essential. Because with the secret to immortality, we begin to learn how to act from that core of love to first calm down meditate with qigong in our qigong exercises and start to experience that core of compassion that core of strength and goodness if you don't already experience it we're going to experience it more and more in this secret to immortality work until joy happiness and freedom And overriding love is what we experience as who we are, as the bodies that we are, as the brains that we are. It may sound far-fetched and impossible, but it's, it's absolutely not. The main thing we're doing with the secret to immortality, with the um, course we offer, with the monthly membership of lectures and Qigong exercises, And what you're listening to now, our podcast, everything we're doing is to take you more and more, getting you grounded to your core, to your soul, in to your soul, immortal self, the eternal you of bliss, happiness, of freedom, of infinite love. And with that infinite love, we're connected to everything there is and beyond. We're connected to each other. We're connected to everything in the world, every living and non-living thing with this beautiful, infinite, unending, powerful love. And in this love of who we are, this love, this eternal love of our core, there is peace. There is relaxation and ease to match and go with that infinite love. All of these traits aren't separate. They're all the same thing, but I kind of break them down to tell you what it is, who you may find that you are as you do this work. It's a a deep peace. It's a deep calm. It's a deep groundedness, groundedness. It's a deep, eternal, unending love. All one thing, not those separate things, each one (laughs) to be considered individually. It's all one thing, but I'm describing it for you as you start to experience it. Love, love, love is what we're talking about in today's podcast. Our core immortal self, our core immortal self, our eternal being is characterized primarily by this infinite brilliant love when you experience yourself when you experience the world when you pause to be conscious of who you are this love is what we have our ability to feel this loving core to feel ourselves in this way is essential as we begin to practice the secret to immortality and it's okay if you don't experience that it's okay if it doesn't happen right away it well as you keep working along with the secret to immortality. Where do you find the secret to immortality? You find it in this podcast episode today. You find us you find it in the blog articles on our website immortalnow.com. And if you go to this article on the blog that I'll be reading from that's called Get the Love You Want And you can find any blog article by going to the search part in the blog, the upper right-hand column. Just type in, get the love you want, and that'll take you to this article. And to the right of every blog article are important articles. They're all important and they're all helpful, but they're articles that we suggest. Like at the right-hand corner 
of this blog article and every blog article on our blog this right there's a right hand column it says essential articles to read underneath that are one two three four five six seven eight nine articles begins with the power of immortal life that article then the secret to immortality on and on and then if you keep scrolling down there's more important articles and we list what those are just want you to know how to do that we have a plethora of source for you at immortalnow.com reading from that blog article it's titled get the love you want and why do we say that because everybody wants love if you think about it everyone can have love with the secret to immortality can have love once you get to that infinite love you experience it as a reciprocal thing you're not really getting it you're not really giving it you're part of that love and when you have that infinite love of your core and play as who you are you have love to give in appropriate situations where you should and you have love that you're part of it's a it's a deeper love than giving and receiving you know if you're a romantic relationship and you bring this infinite soul love to that that's wonderful but we're designed biologically to have a lot of desires around romantic relationships so it's not just this infinite love we're kind of giving love receiving love and it's all conditional and transactional people have to do things for us for us to love them and we have to do things for them this infinite love is part of that romantic love yet that romantic love is included and in kind of interwoven with a lot of expectations and desires and that's how we get hurt and injured in romantic relationships back to what we're doing today to the blog article quote get the love you want reading from that an essential human need is to love and be loved to love and be loved and isn't that wonderful when it happens and isn't that barren when it doesn't aren't we bereft when we're not involved with being loved and loved with loving and being loved in return a reciprocal thing you can get to that at any moment of the day if you're not there with the secret to immortality and what we teach i'm there now as i'm speaking you may be there now with me that infinite love of our eternal soul right now and here it is a love and be loved to love and be loved we don't have to do anything to be loved to love and be loved we just have to successively find our way to our immortal core through things like this podcast quote we can get this love to infinite degree with the secret to immortality what we teach here the pleasure of love how do you describe this infinite love of our soul this infinite love of your higher power if you have one of your experience of god or nirvana of nature or whatever brings you to this beautiful self experience where we're part of something wonderful we're part of something grand and i suggest to you all of us everyone is part of this incredible infinite love that we all share with each other that we all share with the natural world that we all share with a higher power that looks after us that takes care of us we are not separate from anything or anyone that experience of separation comes from not acting as we should act not loving not treating each other with compassionate care and going one step farther of harming each other of killing life forms of going to war the natural world which we teach with the secret to immortality we teach that the natural world isn't simply a mirror of who we are it is in fact who we are who we are is the natural world there's no real separation we control it by what we're thinking doing and saying when our thoughts haven't been very good for eons when our behavior is killing other other life forms to survive in our own life form when we're killing when we're acting harmful to each other and not even aware of our micro harms 
we get a natural world that is behaving the same way because that's who we are. We are the natural world and that's how the natural er world reacts and behaves. It does react and behave as we do. We're telling the natural world what to give us and how to act. So the natural world can get very chaotic, uh, very cruel and very brutal because we've fed the natural world that information, we've written that computer code of the natural world by what we think, say, and do. So it's very essential and important to get to a calm, compassionate, loving place and to act from that loving place so the natural world and every other person can act that way. And one of the important ways to do it with mindfulness from, for immortality is to not accept death as a natural outcome, as the circle of life, not to just unconsciously accept death as an, an a, inevitable outcome of life. Pause for a little bit with me today and think of whether this secret to immortality work is for you. If it is, we look away from death as a natural outcome. When we accept, when we accept death, as an inevitable outcome of life, we're creating it as an inevitable outcome of life. And, we're, and it's not then so, so important that we learn to act with perfect good, compassion, and grace. We don't really have to be our best selves. I don't care how much yoga, meditation, how many books you're reading, if part of your life pan, pan it pans out eventually. If part of your life plan is to die, you're already in the process of death. You're, you've bought into it and it's affecting how you think, it's affecting how you feel, it's affecting how you behave, believe it or not. So just having a commitment to an eternal physical life is how we get going with this. And then as we get involved with the, the compassionate, beautiful love of this way of living, it's not really important what our end life becomes. We're working towards an infinite end life. And the more we work on that together, there becomes a critical mass where it spreads as a viral concept, as a viral influence around the world and with the internet and social media, never has there been a time in history of known history where an idea like this, where an effect of this can spread in a viral way. So it's an idea. It's important to spread that, that idea. But it's much more important that we embody this reality of eternal life as who we are. Religions, not just Christianity, um, in um, Taoism in advanced yoga that's not really written about anymore, and in um, the Jewish, I can't remember the name of it today, but uh, you probably can, teaching about our natural life as spiritual creatures is eternal physical life. This is nothing new at all. If you're in the West, it's kind of all Jesus really talked about. If you're in the East, it is part of Taoism, and um, I do have a Taoist grandmaster that has been my mentor for the last, I think, 26 or seven years. He's from Beijing, China. He was uh, trained, initiated by a group of Taoist immortals in the Wudong Mountains. So this, this is real. And when we talk about physical immortality, that's exactly what we're talking about. And there is a reason we talk about physical immortality, eternal life of bliss, love, compassion, a grace, an infinite presence of beauty and love as who we are that we share with everything and everyone. It is eternal when we start to express this with the understanding that this is where we're going in our personal development, our body changes. You know, some of us don't get there. My teacher's father was trained in all of this, but he lived in Beijing and he treated people medically for his career and taught Qigong and healed people with Qigong. But living in Beijing, 
his life that he chose, his mission was to eventually live very healthful, a very healthy, strong life, but eventually to pass away. Usually in China, the men and women that are living this lifestyle of immortal physical life, they retreat up into the mountains away from the influence of the city. And as we work on this together, we may find a place to retreat in America, or we may just find a place in the country or wherever to start to practice this together, to teach it to each other, to teach people to be teachers of this, where we can pull away a little bit of the energy of the cities, where the energy is tied in to an acceptance of death and dying, where we reject that. We don't really use our energy to reject anything. We've ceased fighting anything and anyone in this, in this work, but we don't accept death as a natural outcome of life. We change our course. You know, when you change the direction that a boat is going with its rudder, if that's the right word, I'm, I don't have a boat. When you change the direction of anything that's traveling a long distance, you just need to change the direction a little bit. And eventually the distance, the destination is far, far away and different. So it's progress, not perfection with this secret to immortality work. We just change our direction a little bit at a time. And then we don't need to change our direction at all because we're headed in the right direction and the work starts to work us. At the beginning, it may be a little hard to form new habits. It always is a new way of living on a daily basis that we teach. But eventually it's easier and easier if we do it every day and the energy starts to work its way on us. Our, our style, our approach, our mission with this work, there becomes an energy in it, in our bodies, in our souls, where it becomes less and less an effort. As we do this work, it becomes less of an effort, less of an effort again. Reading from the article, and there's a link beneath this talk, leading from an article beneath this podcast episode, there's a link to this article. You can also find it in the search part of our blog section, The Pleasure of Love, as we experience our core self, this immortal self, there is a pleasurable love. Our immortal self is really blissful, really pleasurable, compassionate, loving, a presence of infinite love, a love that is at once both loving us as we are loving it. And we're not really loving it, it's loving us. We're in a reciprocal consciousness, infinite and unending consciousness of beautiful love. Life at its best is a shared experience of love. That is what life becomes with the secret to immortality. As we experience our own infinite love, we have love to give when necessary, as I've read here before in this episode. With love, we can experience the loving soul of all people. We can see love around us everywhere in the world. Our immortal core is love. For the best of life, be wise, be good, and look to your love every day, all day, whenever you can think about it. You know, it's so easy. It doesn't take much to look to your love. A Qigong exercise that we teach with eyes closed, pretend you can look to the tip of your nose. From the tip of your nose, visualize a ruby red arc coming out three to four inches and curving back into your heart. Eyes to nose, eyes to heart, and a ruby red arc. You can think of that even with your eyes open at any point, at any place in your day. Eyes to nose, nose to heart, and a ruby red arc. And then let your attention go to your feet. See them ground, grounded like roots of a tree, 10 or 12 feet. So we're looking to our heart. We're activating that immortal core. And then we're letting that love and compassion flow down our body as it should and into the earth. So at as we should be as humans, we are always grounded to the earth. We have sort of one hand up into the heavens 
a heart of love, compassion, infinite goodness in our heart, and a connection to the earth. So we're a conduit and connection, heaven to body, body to earth. Be happy now, every day, every minute, if you can think of it. Now, this is a quote next, a quote that takes some contemplation. Go to the web, go to the <laughs> blog article on our website, immortalnow.com. The blog article again is Create the Love You Want. That's not right. I'm looking right at it. The blog article is called Get the Love You Want on our blog site at immortalnow.com. We go into more and more in this article, and one heading is how to be happy. To be at that eternal core is to be happy, to be in bliss, to be in love. There's really no name for the beautiful intensity that is not intense at all. It's calm, it's ease, but it's intense too when you think about it. There's a quote on our blog article. I'm going to read it now. It takes a little thinking and um, it might be a little heavy and I'm going to help you through it. If you go to the blog article right underneath the little rabbit within the article it says quote patterns of thought speech and action repeated over time create everything that exists and that's the secret to immortality and that's really this that's really any personal development program that's any spiritual development program that has ever existed our patterns our thought and speech speech and actions and behaviors that we re repeat again and again most of these are unconscious our thoughts we have unconscious dialogue that has been given to us in our family of origin we have unconscious speech and behavior that we're not even aware of we may not be helping ourselves entirely by how we act. We may be not fully kind to other people and doing micro insults and not even know it. Most of us do. Quote, patterns of thought, speech, and action repeated over time create everything that exists. A lot of physicists today, um, quantum uh, physicists, theoretical quantum physicists postulate based on the results, research results, the data and the math, a lot of them postulate that what makes the most sense of what they're looking at is that we're creating this reality ourselves. Again, it's nice that physics is, I love physics, I took a lot of sciences in college, I stay up to date. Quantum physics quantum mechanics, it makes sense to them today of what spiritual teachers of the past taught, that we're creating our own reality. Everybody knows this on a, in a way, you know, if you worked hard to qualify for a job and you work hard at the job, you are using your thought, speech, and your behaviors to get ahead in the world, to improve yourself. With the secret to immortality, we take it one step or a few steps farther and say we are creating this physical reality because we are this physical reality we're not just our bodies or physical bodies we are every scintilla of this physical reality an expression of it we go on in this quote quote there's one more sentence and and i may lose you here but i'll explain it quote our world is a reflexive phenomenon. Phenomenon is just a big deal that we don't fully understand, perhaps. Quote, our world is a reflexive phenomenon where conscious and unconscious actions give rise to material reality. So what we do, what we program into the natural world, into our bodies, into our brains, into the world around us, it's like a reflexive reality, a reflexive phenomenon of our conscious and unconscious actions giving rise to the material world. We give rise to the material world as people. I know that may sound kind of counter to 
some religions, but I don't think it's counter at all. You know, I was raised up in a Christian tradition, and I don't find any of this counter to anything that Christ taught at all. Christ was not an egomaniac. That stuff didn't kind of c controlling other people with threats and scary things and real physical nasty consequences. When you have a religion that becomes part of a government, part of a power structure, that religion changes. And what's written as that religion changes to serve that power structure, to serve that government. I think though, when you get to the actual words of Jesus, the preponderance of it is pretty much just what I'm teaching. When you get into some kind of higher level, my teacher was taught by Taoist in the mountains, and they're not really Taoist at the point where they are as immortals teaching other people how to live this immortality. They're beyond any words. They're beyond any teaching. They're just dwelling in that eternal place. And in that eternal place, they're having an impact on people around them. So when I'm with my teacher in Seattle and I'm around him, he doesn't teach verbally anything. That's my job, uh, my mission in life, not his. But he has that immortal presence that influences everyone near him if they're looking for that, if they're wanting that. And he is sort of tied in to the Taoist immortals in the mountains. And my teacher was also discovered and taught from a very early age from lamas in Tibet, Tibetan Buddhism. But my teacher isn't a Tibetan Buddhist. My teacher isn't a Taoist. A little traffic there, apologies. My teacher is really beyond all that, just dwelling in the eternal place. And that's where I'm teaching from. I'm not teaching you. You don't have to memorize any of this. You just need to calm down, meditate a little, get into a mindfulness here and now, and do Qigong. Quote, Patterns of thought, speech, and action repeated over time create everything that exists. Wow. Our world is a reflexive phenomenon where conscious and unconscious actions give rise to material reality. We aren't victims of this wild and crazy natural world that is sometimes acting favorably and sometimes not. The natural world we teach, I teach, is who we really are. It's our physical body, and that natural world is chaotic and brutal and unpredictable. If we've been acting that into the world year after year, century after century, killing brutality, harm, and a lack of kindness overall, we're changing all that as any spiritual practice does, but we're changing it with a little more awareness and a little more intent of immortality now, of making heaven on earth. Quote, to experience love, happiness, and immortality, you have to practice it. This is a quote from the blog article. Quote, you may think your feelings are dependent. Sometimes it's inevitable. We may think that our feelings are dependent. You may think that your feelings are dependent to large degree on eternal events in your life, finances, relationships, <laughs> finances, I'm reading too fast, finances, relationships, job, etc. And really, isn't our happiness dependent on finances, relationships, and jobs? To some extent, but as you practice the secret to immortality work, deep well-being can follow regardless of outside circumstances. This may sound like a concept where you kind of intellectually go, yeah, yes, that's got to be possible for sure. But on a practical basis, on a daily basis, it just seems so impossible. I'm here to tell you that constant bliss, 
constant immortality presence in your brain, in your body, in your heart, this joy and happiness is possible to have independent of, of the things that you want. Because I've lived that. I've lived that. I've worked through that decade after decade after decade to get to this decade, 2023, where I'm speaking to you and telling you, I have lived through hardship, illness, accident, pain, chronic pain over the long term. I've struggled with nothing going right, no finances, no relationships, no job, just being alone in the world for many, many years in pain, in agony, but doing the immortality work every day regardless and having a little bit of this bliss, happiness, and freedom decades ago, and then having a little bit more and a little bit more every day and working toward it. There is nothing bad that happened to you that can't become a strength. And I tell you that because I've lived that in my life. I've lived out of the injuries, out of the accidents, out of the bad luck into good luck into good luck, into grace, happiness, and bliss. And you absolutely can too with everything we're teaching here. I guarantee it you can, but it's not going to be instantaneous. I guarantee you that. How could it be if you've been practicing something else for most of your life? If your family of origin has been practicing something else? If all your relatives on and on back into history have been practicing something else? It takes a little time sometimes to turn all that around, yet some of you have nothing to turn around. You're just born into practicing this, and we're teaching you how to do it as we go along here. To experience love and happiness, you have to practice it. I'm reading again what I just read to you. You may think your feelings are dependent to a large degree on eternal events in your life. Finances, relationships, job, etc. Yet, as you practice the secret to immortality, deep well being can follow regardless of outside circumstances. Now, there's a whole lot to this article, so get to the article if you want to read a lot of that whole lot. But for now, we're ending this podcast episode. Bless you and keep you. You are immortal now.